Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us. If we haven't met before, my name is Mark Hubbard, and I'm Head of Government Sales. And with me is Bob Feeney, Head of Central Government, both of us with Summerford Associates. We also have on the call William Priestley, who's the Enterprise SE Manager at Veronis in the UK, and who will cover how Veronis can protect Active Directory in much more detail. This morning, we'll be talking about the importance of keeping your Active Directory in check and the possible consequences when your Active Directory is not as secure as it could be. So once ransomware gangs establish a foothold in an organization, the next move is often to attempt to compromise additional accounts and escalate those accounts' privileges. So this places Active Directory firmly in the forefront of the attack zone. Active Directory is often known as the keys to the king's kingdom. And uh, once any attacker has control of these keys, the crown jewels are theirs for the taking. Uh, with that in mind, having a weak Active Directory can leave your business exceptionally exposed and leave your data at risk. So with uh, regards to the agenda, we'll start by talking about Summerford Associates uh, for those who are not familiar with us. Then Will Priestley from Veronis will give an overview of Veronis before going into more detail as we go through. So it's always a good idea to consider the threat landscape holistically. And from there, ideally, we can work backwards to find where we need to focus most of our efforts. So we'll look at the common entry tactics used, highlighting where any discovered gaps need closing up. And of course, in the event of an attacker gaining access, where they go from there. Finally, we'll talk to you about the data risk assessment, which is the fun and exciting bit. And then we'll leave a little time, if we have it, for questions and answers. Please pop any questions you have in the Q&A window as we're going along, and we'll address them at the end of the session. So Summerford Associates are a platinum partner, partner with Veronis, and we are the go-to partner for expertise across some of the UK's largest companies, government agencies and departments. <clears throat> Our customer-focused consultants understand both the business and the information management challenges faced by organisations today. Our professional services team is comprehensively trained in every one of our solutions and works closely with all of our customers to meet their specific requirements. One thing that sets Summerford apart from others is our ability to deliver health checks. Not only can we provide health checks annually, but we also strive to ensure that customer environments are fit for purpose, following things like software updates or following on from a, an increase in software components or modules post installation even. Veronis is just one of the solutions for which we can offer health checks. So please get in touch if you have a current instance of Veronis that you want us to help you with. We also have a, an in-house support desk dedicated to resolving support cases without the need to actually escalate to uh, our vendors. In fact, over 90% of support cases are resolved without the need for escalation. So we'd like now to introduce Will Priestley from Veronis, who will run through the solution in much more detail. Over to you, Will. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Mark, for the handover. So yeah, my name is William Priestley. I run our sales engineering uh, team for many of our large organizations um, here in the UK. And you know, Sunford Associates is, um, Sorry, we're one of the partners for Summerford Associates and uh, we've been working with them for a while. And what Veronis offers is a free cloud security and data risk assessments. And as you can see from the slide, there are various flavors, in fact. You know, there's, there's a risk assessment for remote workers, for Microsoft Teams, ransomware preparedness, Active Directory risk assessments. You know, it's, it's a bit like ice cream in that you can mix your scoops all in one go. So if you want to undertake one of these risk assessments, um, for any particular or multiple uh, aspects of your cloud hosted and, and unstructured data or the infrastructure hosting it, feel free to, to reach out to your Summerford uh, partner and, and talk to them about it. But who are Veronis? So next slide, please. Um, so Veronis is a data centric security platform that protects your data and infrastructure from insiders, malware and advanced persistent threats, as well as help you achieve compliance with regulatory and data privacy laws. 
we do this for your cloud applications like an M365, uh, Teams, legacy on-premise data stores, as well as the infrastructure facilitating access to them. Uh, for example, the VPNs, which would be your remote workers accessing it, DNS, and web traffic, as well as your Azure and on-premise Active Directory, one of the topics, or the, the main topic for this webinar. And Veronis achieves that by implementing preventative controls, i.e. hardening your Active Directory, achieving least privilege around the data, reducing the amount of sharing links that could be in Office 365, and, as, and, uh, and so forth, as well as help you implement detective controls to balance those preventative controls. And we, you know, the detective controls are via user behavior analytics and machine learning to help uh, stop threat activity early in the kill chain. And on top of that, we help you wrap this layer of data governance around the data so by you know, implementing data runners, so these are people that are accountable for the information, taking some of that burden away from IT, democratizing that responsibility, so to speak. And Veronis really does believe in helping organizations achieve uh, their security and data privacy goals. And we do this with our tried and tested operational journey that you see here, this detect, prevent, and sustain, that helps you identify where the sensitive data is, what risk it's at, and pr prioritize that across all of your data platforms and help you remediate those risks through automation. So how does Veronis achieve this? Well, Veronis is a metadata correlation engine, if you will. It's collecting a lot of met metadata from all those cloud and on-premise uh, platforms you see on the left to address uh, three core use cases over on the right, being data protection, privacy and compliance and threat detection response. And everything data does starts, sorry, everything Veronis does, I, I mean, starts with the data. So we have uh, the most comprehensive, either the largest range of out of the box data classification capabilities. And it's also the fastest and most accurate. And we're gonna scan all of your data stores to find out where GDPR data is, clear text passwords, PCI banking details, CCPA, HIPAA, any regulatory information you're looking for, it's there out of the box. And accuracy is key for Veronis because if you can trust the accuracy of the uh, classic, uh, classification content, then you can trust the decisions and reporting and automated responses taking off the back of it, whether it's locking down the data, disposing of it dispensively, or whether you're labeling it as part of a wider DLP uh, uh, program. So once we know where your sensitive data is, we're then broadening out and correlating the metadata. So resolving all the users and groups in your business and how they have access to data and where that access comes from. And I said within your business, I'm also of course including sharing links being sent out by your business to third parties external to your organization. And just by correlating the, the sensitivity, the users and the access controls, you can actually see how we address data protection where you have over permissive access risk, which sensitive areas are more uh, priority for remediation and so forth. The next three uh, metadata parameters that we, uh, pr uh, parameters we take in are all audit telemetry. And again, everything starts with the data. We're monitoring all the data access activity, people creating files, creating sharing links, uploading, downloading, and um, uh, the information itself. And that you can see that we can start to address privacy and compliance. Where is data being created? Where is it being processed? Where in the business is this activity happening? What risky practices are being introduced? Who are the data owners of that information and so forth? Or where is that data still? But then we're also machine learning and baselining all of that activity so we can understand what regular activity in the business looks like and respond to threats like insiders and APTs compromising accounts trying to exfiltrate that data. And then Obviously data is a key target for advanced persistent threats, but one of their key milestones before they even get there is compromising Active Directory, one of the core topics for this webinar. And we can also monitor risks in Active Directory misconfigurations that are easily exploitable to allow hackers to get a foothold within the business and escalate their privileges. And again, we're monitoring and baselining the activity there so we can detect threats targeting any of those misconfigurations or other uh, aspects of AD. And then broadening out that threat detection even further with more context and correlation is the perimeter technology. Your remote workers, how are they VPNing in? What does their normal web traffic look like? Um, DNS traffic, they're not you know, used for reconnaissance, can be an exfiltration method. You know, all of these correlated together allows you to detect threats very early in the kill chain before you even get to those data exfiltration attempts. So hopefully you can see from that slide how Veronis works, how it's correlating with lots of metadata to give you actionable insights and automation to deliver on some of those use cases. Next slide, please. Before, so the threat landscape. So what's going on right now that means you know, we need to focus our efforts to protect our Active Directory and ultimately keep our data safe. Like I said, Active Directory is a key milestone, so it's a good point 
to start there. Now, attackers are leveraging a huge number of techniques. You know, they, they know that we've got EDR and, and, and firewalls and, and antivirus and network monitoring and all these other controls in place. So they're coming up with lots of clever techniques to bypass that uh, as well. But one thing they can't bypass is the fact they still need an account to do whatever they're doing within the business. Um, and some of the techniques that, uh, you know, that, that hackers are using, some of the common ones we see are password spraying attacks and, and Kerber roasting. Um, and, and you see it, you know, you see it almost daily, you know, organizations are being breached uh, every week. There's someone new in the, in the newspaper that's had an attack. And it's, it's no longer that question of if an attacker gets in, it's more likely when. And we can never predict what method they'll use, what tools, techniques or protocols, they'll, they'll, uh, procedures they'll, they'll uh, leverage to gain their agenda. So to, to having that detective ability and knowing what's going on in AD and with the data is a way to get around that. It doesn't matter what they've used to get in, it's what they're doing after they get in. That's where Veronis is helping you detect these threats. But often there are controls in Active Directory that we don't necessarily keep up to date with or on top of. You know, we're doing lots of domain migrations, people are being, you know, joining departments, they have uh, legacy permissions that don't get cleaned up, they, uh, there's so many misconfigurations, people are, it's busy. Operationally, we have to do our day job and there's not enough time to go back and clean up those quick uh, shortcuts we took or non-best practice uh, configurations we took at that time. And again, these, these, are, these are exploitable by hackers. Um, I mean, an, an example, for, uh, for example, is, you know, uh, Kerberos is a key authentication protocol within, within Active Directory. It gives you an authentication token that you then use for your sessions when you log on to servers or your laptop or wherever. And, you know, the service that, that runs Kerberos has a password and you, it's recommended you change that password every 40 days. Now, let's be honest, how many of our organizations are really changing the Kerberos password every 40 days? No one does. And that means that hackers get an infinite amount of time to try and guess that password or, uh, and, and get in. And if they did happen to have access to that password, they have an infinite amount of access, or sorry, time of access because it's never going to get changed. Um, so it's, it's recommended you do change it. It resets all the tickets. It just helps uh, reduce that window of opportunity for any hacker trying to get in or if they have got in, leveraging that, the, that account to, to get up to uh, uh, nefarious activities, shall we say. Uh, next slide, please. So, common entry tactics. Um, as I mentioned, you know, password spraying and curb roasting are two of the most common attack methods we see at the moment. But you know, it, it, you don't necessarily know how they're going to get in, uh, and whether even the endpoint is the key entry point that they're using. But once they are in, as I said, we know that they're definitely going to go for AD. And even if they're not going in by the endpoint, they, you know, with the remote working world we're in. You know, there was a huge spike and increase in VPN servers exposed to the internet to allow these remote workers, and not all of them were secured. And, and during risk assessments, we've seen so many uh, of uh, uh, remote work, uh, sorry, VPN servers being brute forced or have password spraying attacks uh, on them. So, what is a password spraying attack? Well, a, a traditional brute force attack is where you take a big list of passwords and you just try and hammer them through an account. Uh, to see if any of them work, but obviously you only get so many attempts of a failed login before the account's locked out, so that's not ideal. What hackers are doing now are taking these uh, data dumps of passwords. There'd be loads of breaches like, you know, uh, LinkedIn and uh, Dropbox and MyFitnessPal. So many breaches that have exposed users' passwords onto the internet. There's literally uh, dictionaries, uh, hundreds of millions of rows long of common passwords. And these are very easy to run through to guess an account. So what they'll do is they'll take a password or a couple of passwords, they'll guess it on one account, and then they move horizontally along the AD accounts, trying these passwords. And by the time they get back to the first account again, the, the, the window for password reset or password attempts has passed and they can try the next set. It's very quick, it's very scripted, but it allows them to try a whole bunch of passwords horizontally across AD without locking out any accounts. And it's quite low and slow. And if, if you're just looking at the AD logs as a security analyst, you wouldn't necessarily know whether it was someone doing a password spraying attack or someone just fat fingered their keyboard and typed it in wrong a couple of times before getting it right later. It's very hard to pick up unless you're analyzing the general behavior within AD like Veronis is. 
Um, but once they're in, again, that's when they can use that account to move laterally within the business or maybe have access to multiple accounts. So if you detected one account that's been compromised and lock it out, they still have a backup account to gain access to your environment. Um, so that's password spraying. Um, if it's unsuccessful, for example, none of the passwords they try work. Um, and, and by the way, it's not just a dictionary text. They can use something known as uh, masking to gain access. So, and I, I've seen it a lot. We, we can find clear text passwords in environments. The amount of clear text passwords I see summer 2019, winter 2020 as, as passwords or you know any kind of name. It could be a city, Manchester uh, 32, England uh, you know, 1966. It's, the, it's simple to say, I want a, a, a dictionary word plus uh, some four digit or two digit date and you can quickly go through those. But if those attacks don't succeed, um, we've seen a big rise in Kerber roasting to gain access, particularly to privileged accounts. So Kerber roasting is, well, let's go back to how service accounts work just very quickly, but any, any, any service you use, whether it's you know, exchange for email, has an account to run that service. And by the way that it's designed, you can request these authentication tokens for, for that service very quickly. It's just, you just it's a ticket request. Now an attacker, if they've compromised an endpoint or they've, they're on a VPN server, they can go to AD, find what all these service accounts are and request their authentication tickets, take those tickets offline. These are encrypted tickets and inside the ticket is the original password. They can take them offline, put them through, usually it's a GPU rig, so very fast processing, and they will just brute force uh, the encryption of those tickets to get the original password back. If you have other AD misconfigurations, for example, you've got legacy Windows servers, 2003, some desktops or, uh, with XP or, or something else, um, and those servers may not even exist in your environment anymore, but they did at one point. And as I said, we never clean up AD, so the uh, you probably still have configurations in AD that allow and support legacy encryption protocols these legs and RC4 being an example, you know, EAS256, latest to greatest, very solid, hard to break encryption. RC4, legacy, weak, very easy to crack. And if your AD is configured to support it because these legacy systems needed it, then I can request those Kerberos tickets with RC4 encryption and I can brute force that well within a day. Uh, it's so easy when you've got a GPU rig and these hackers will have it. So I get the original password back, I've got the service account, I can then log back into the VPN server or the endpoint, wherever I happen to be, and I'm in, that's my foothold. Now imagine that service account is running as an AD domain uh, admin. And I, I promise you, we see this often. There are lots of service accounts running as domain admins. And so instead of me brute forcing all of the service accounts, I'm just gonna focus on the one or two domain admin service accounts that I happen to find. And that's saved me a load of time. And not only have I got access to your environment, I've got domain access. I can do everything I want. Great, you know, I'm in. Now let's look for the data. Um, so that's that's the curb roasting. Um, a very uh, plus because it's all brute forced offline. You can't detect it in your system. The only way you can detect it is, you know, how many people are requesting Kerberos tickets from service accounts. And again, Verona's just picking up on that. And another uh, classic example of how hack attackers will gain entry, particularly through ransomware and malware, is using uh, the zero logon vulnerability, which is uh, attacking the net logon aspect of, of Active Directory. And all you really need, all it, I mean, this, this, this vulnerability is, is so simple, it makes you weep, but all you do is you're basically sending the authentication request packed with zeros. Um, and because it's packed with zeros in the logon stream, uh, that's actually, it doesn't say it's an incorrect password. It just says, oh yeah, you, you're in. I, I recognize you, so you've authenticated. And once, and it's on the DC, it's a vulnerability on the DC. And once you're in the DC, you can actually gain, you can actually reset the domain controller's uh, computer account. And you've basically taken over the domain controller. You can do whatever you want. You can create new domain accounts. You can create backup, not backup accounts, but accounts that you may want in case uh, your primary um, account is, is discovered and, and locked out and um, you know hackers always build in redundancy to stay persistent so this is something else that you want to be aware of when they're in your environment they're not just breaching you once and you can kick them out they breached you once they're going to stay persistent and they'll have multiple methods for doing that uh, so you know common entries of getting into Veronis next slide please oh, sorry Veronis into your environment what do they do then yeah. So once they've they've compromised Active Directory and the, you know they're, they're in the business, uh, where where do they go then? Well, 
um, they're going to pivot. They're basically going to try and compromise. Other accounts are going to do a reconnaissance to see where your servers are um, and where the data sits. Um, they're probably going to create new accounts, you know, as I said, redundant accounts or compromise other accounts to get in. Um, but first thing they do is reconnaissance and they'll be using DNS, uh, which is the domain name system. For those that don't know what this does, it literally just translates human readable server names or if you want to look at the internet, um, uh, website addresses into computer readable IP addresses. It's just a, a, a telephone book of converting IP address into a human readable name. And so they'll give it an IP range within the network and say, tell me what's here. And then any servers that exist in the IP range will come back with their server names. They say, all right, you know, there's a file server, there's another file server, there's um, a SharePoint site that I want to, you know, may want to look at. They know where the data is. They know that data is going to be overexposed. There's going to be global access, which means they can very freely just do a, a quick PowerShell search for any strings or regexes like bank account numbers or financial records. And those files will just come back to them very easily. And then they'll just start logging on to these servers and looking for the data, trying to uh, trying to compromise it. If they have domain domain access, they they don't even need to worry about that. They'll just take the data and uh, move it out of the organization. And once they've moved it out of the organization, they have that data. They're going to monetize it. The the common thing they do after that is uh, fire off some ransomware and then try and extort you for, for some extra Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, because why not? They can do, they've got the data they want, they can try and get more money from you. And if you happen to have cyber insurance, well, that even more better for them because they know you're likely to pay out. And these, these hackers, APTs and criminal organizations, they do their research, they do their homework, they know who has got cyber insurance and who hasn't. They even try and compromise insurance firms to see their list of clients, to see the level of coverage they have, so they know exactly what amount of of uh, extortion they need to take, knowing that it's more likely to be paid out. Um, so you know, this is something to be aware of when it comes to ransomware and data exfiltration. If you've had ransomware, chances are you've had data leave your environment and you need to find out what that data was and how they got in. Uh, next slide, please. What would that look like if you were monitoring with Verona? So you're monitoring your Active Directory, you're monitoring your data, you're monitoring uh, you know, all your, all your, your um, your web activity and all of this. Veronis is pulling in all of these telemetries. It's correlating it. It's enhancing it with additional metadata. You know, we, we do device pairing. So we know this is the laptop I always use. If someone else uses it, that's unusual. I know the data I always access, the time of day I log in. I know whether I'm a service account or a human account or an executive or an admin. You know, we're profiling this and enhancing the metadata of, the, of our normalized event logs so that you can have a very clear easy to understand picture of what's happening. And let's go through this kill chain. For example, at the bottom, this has taken our Kerber roasting attack situation. So what's happened here is someone's compromised uh, an endpoint. They've harvested some uh, service account tickets, taken it offline, cracked it with the legacy RC4 encryption very quickly, and they have the password. They've now logged back into that endpoint with that service account. So you can see from the alert name, it's very descriptive, service account, logged onto a personal device for the first time. As a security analyst, I, I don't need to know more. I, you know, I think that's unusual. I'm probably going to prioritize that alert out of all the other alerts I have to deal with because this looks like a real compromise. Um, clicking into that, I'll get a lot more context like, you know, what, well, what is the service account? Whose device is it normally paired with? What time of day to service account access and all the rest of it. But let's just assume that this, not that it wasn't noticed, but let's just walk through the rest of the kill chain of the attack and just show how Veronis picks up each of these stages. So this is a very early in the kill chain, the first log on, the first foothold, we've picked up that compromise. And you can uh, lock out the account, you can take the device off of the network, and you can uh, then remediate it and clear up the infection. Very early in the kill chain, but as, let's walk through the rest. That service account is now accessing atypical files, atypical folders. Some of those folders contain GDPR data. So that sensitivity context that we talked about in that hexagon is coming into play here. Again, enriched metadata, pre-correlated, informative, actionable alerts. Um, and you can go straight to the events to see, well, what is that GDPR data? Which data subjects do I need to inform? How much of this is compromised? Can I report this to the ICO within that 72-hour window that I'm obliged to do so? All of this. But let's carry on again. 
at the top, you see that the service account has accessed the internet for the first time through the proxy. That's unusual, it never does that. And now an unusual amount of data is being uploaded to an email website, it could be Gmail or whatever. Um, you know, this is a clear descriptive alerts and, and Veronis is, is delivering that. And like I said, when you click on these alerts, you get context rich, pre-correlated information for your security analyst to really analyze what's going on here. I know the device, I know the account, I know the data, I know the time of day. I even know what, what flavor of GDPR data it would be. It could be Greek uh, social security number, for example. This information, and, and then we have playbooks that allow you to, allow your, inve your investigation team to go through a systematic uh, process consistently in terms of investigation, containment, and remediation. Um, but if you, and again, off the back of this, we have automated responses. So some orchestrated automated responses. You can actually have a PowerShell script, shut, as I said, shut down um, that laptop or log it off the network. You can have it lock out the account so it can't um, log in again, kill its authentication tokens. And these automated responses are very, very successful against ransomware. We're so successful at picking up ransomware, whether it's you know a brand new variant with no signature, it doesn't matter is the account activity and the data. You cannot change that behavior. And if an account is running through ransom, uh, running through data, trying to encrypt it, either very quickly or very slowly, it's some usual behavior. It looks like ransomware. We can fire off that PowerShell script to really prevent, contain, and stop that risk in its tracks. And then you've got the full audit logs to find out which data was, uh, was infected, uh, in, yeah, infected. What do you prioritize your uh, recovery so the business operations resume and so forth. Um, and then after you've restored that data from backup, by monitoring the DNS traffic, you can have that assurance that you haven't restored a backed up copy of the malware because it's gonna connect to a C2 server again. We pick this up, you can then compromise, isolate, and remove it cleanly so before it tries to encrypt your environment again. Um, I talked about the fact that uh, the service account has access to GDPR data. Um, you know, the Veronis risk report uh, shows that on average, you know, about 20% of an organization's files and folders are configured to be accessible by anyone. And in Office 365, we see similar uh, misconfigurations as well. There's access controls, which means everyone within the organization has access to this data. And through Delve, which is a search portal, people are often coming up and discovering information that they shouldn't have access to, but they do because their peers or other people in the business are touching it and using it, and they just have visibility. Sharing links, people create public links uh, externally, which means anyone with that link can access the information behind it. It's, uh, you know, it's it, the, the amount of access controls in, in Teams and, and Office 365 are actually more complex than in Windows, and we actually end up seeing a, a, a larger overexposure risk there. So. These risk assessments can help you highlight that and prioritize and reduce this. Um, so next slide, please. Hopefully you can see how you know, Veronis can detect these threats and how we can remediate them very quickly. Um, and you know, so what would, uh, I think I've stolen a bit of my own thunder here really, but um, you know, we're monitoring that Active Directory for the odd attempts. We can see where it's accessing data in the file servers. Um, and where they're accessing information for the first time. But there's so much more than that. There's abnormal activity from ransomware, there's uh, remote worker activity. We see this behavior from remote workers in the early stages of the pandemic. We call it data hoarding. Uh, users weren't necessarily doing it maliciously, although some were. Some people were using the opportunity to look for a new job, they'd access the data, but people would, they working remotely, they're still used to working on a laptop and they would download loads of data from the corporate servers to their local machines and, and, and basically hoard it and work on it. And if they've got weak uh, home passwords or even no Wi-Fi password, or they haven't patched their router and they've got uh, uh, hackable, exploitable vulnerabilities on their router, their endpoints can be compromised and that data is at risk uh, as well. Office 365, people trying to bypass um, multi-factor authentication through man-in-the-middle attacks, people using uh, uh, malicious uh, cloud applications. So, you know, Azure has an application ecosystem. If you get someone, you know, says, oh, to, to view this document, you need to approve this application to see it. Similar to a phishing email, very great social engineering. People never tell from the, you know, this app needs, uh, needs to have these rights to access your data. 
um, you know, we did, we're used to it on our phones, right? We swipe, we, we open a, a new app we've downloaded. It says, oh, it wants access to your camera. It wants access to your files for it, this app to do what it needs to do. We just say yes. We're socially engineered to say yes. We do this and hackers end up getting backdoor API access to all the data through this cloud application. And again, you cannot detect these with traditional methods. You know, it's really the data centric method that Veronis is taking where you start to see all this unusual activity affecting the targeted material, which is the data or that first milestone being Active Directory. So this is where Veronis is helping businesses secure their data. And like I said, through the risk assessments, um, which would be next slide, please. Through the risk assessments, you can very easily uh, understand where that data is and implement those preventative controls. So we have the automation solutions to uh, restrict that sensitive data. We have playbooks on hardening Active Directory. So where you have those admin accounts with those service principal names, which allows you to request their Kerberos tickets, we can tell, identify where those service accounts exist and you can then reduce their, uh, their level of privilege if, if possible, if you can't at least you have that comfort blanket of Veronis monitoring and alerting to ticket harvesting attacks happening within AD. If you have legacy R4 encryption or legacy um, uh, servers and configurations in AD, we're finding out where that is. If you've done a domain di domain migration with uh, the SID history from your previous domain and the current one, unless you've cleaned that up, again, these are methods that can be exploited to overexpose uh, data within the business. So all of this is there for AD. Same for Office 365, uh, whether it's GDPR, on-premise, Windows, where do we have this sensitive data? Where do we have sharing risks? Where are people downloading this information where they shouldn't be? The ransomware preparedness assessments, um, again, overexposure, that blast radius. If a regular account triggers ransomware and a fifth of your business has open access, that's a fifth of your data that's gonna make the business grind to a halt and cost you operational downtime. Um, and then we also have uh, the well remote work assessment. So you know who's logging in, who's doing what, what data are they accessing, how often do they work with the on-premise data versus Office 365, and so forth. Um, and we do have a cloud uh, risk assessment. So looking at your cloud applications like um, uh, Box, Google Drive, AWS, Salesforce, GitHub, Slack. You know we're giving you an insight into the misconfigurations that might expose the data in those environments, the sharing links people create, who has access, it's particularly with Google Drive, people are linking the data with their personal accounts. When you're offboarding those corporate users, they've left the business, we're forgetting to off offboard their personal accounts. And we see, we see it plenty of times where people still have access to corporate data via their personal accounts into Google Drive and so forth. So, and, and then you know the sharing links are being created, who has access, are there misconfigurations that not only expose the data to anyone that happens to have the URL, but actually allows Google to index it so your data is searchable on the internet and accessible. This is what a cloud risk assessment can give you insights on as well. Um, and as part of that, we can even do a purple team exercise, which is where we're coming in and doing a, a red hat pen test, so to speak, but in conjunction with your blue team defense team. And we're gonna help you see how your existing security systems would detect the threats that we do. We're using real life APT methods. We're not using simple uh, script kitty approach. Um, you know, ransomware is a part of that. We're not really going to encrypt your data, it's simulated, but you get to sort of see what your ecosystem currently can deliver, which is great, you know, we're validating it, we're not trying to show gaps, we're just trying to validate it, but also highlight how Veronis is uniquely positioned as a data-centric security platform to cover the aspects that people don't monitor, which I, as I said, is, is the information itself. Everyone's monitoring the network, the perimeter, the, the, the endpoints, this is traditional security and it's great, it works, but the hackers know that that's where the focus is. So they'll come with alternative methods to bypass that, to be persistent, to say so, stay subversive and try and access the data and exfiltrate it without you being detected on those traditional methods. So this is an, an extra string to your bow, so to speak, from those detective controls. And like I said, with the remediation, you can actually put in preventative controls and reduce that blast radius of uh, ransomware attacking data or uh, the, the cross-sectional area of hackers gaining access to information. But this is a free risk assessment. 
Um, so if, if something, one of these, these, these ice cream scoop flavors of a risk assessment appeals to you, please speak to your Summerford representative um, and we can take you through the steps for doing that as well. Um, I'm, I think I'm there. And I says, um, open for questions. Many thanks, Will. That's uh, very, very concise and informative. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, that's everything really that we, we wanted to cover off with you all today. I wanted to thank you all for taking the time to listen to us this morning. Uh, we'd really like to hear from you, so please get in touch and let us know if you want to take advantage of the data risk assessment and find those security gaps and vulnerabilities in your environment. And um, just like to say thanks, Will, and have a great day, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks very much. Bye.